the completed work of Christ, we are accepted because of what Jesus did. Christianity doesn't start with a do. Christianity starts with a done. That because of what Jesus did. But this attitude, out of this, out of this acceptance, after this being accepted by Christ based upon His finished work, there's this attitude that flows out of this, of this new relationship that we've entered into. And this is this attitude of dependence. No longer are we independent. This attitude of, 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 of dependence upon God. And so, I want you to understand a couple of things. The law has no claim over us. Let's look at verses, verse 2. It says this, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You see, the law has no claim on us anymore because Christ has already met all of those specifications that the law needed. Also notice this, uh, the law cannot condemn us anymore. You think about this, in our country, you cannot be tried for the same, uh, for the same thing twice. Or at least for the same act twice. You can maybe, I guess, murder somebody, get off the first time, and then, but, but you can never be tried the same, twice for the same thing. And that's what it says in verse 3. It says this, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Isn't that good news? You see, so the law has no claim on us. It has no. Uh, it cannot condemn us, but also the law cannot control us. I want you to notice here in verse 4. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You see, Paul begins to bring out this new attitude that we have, that we no longer, as it says here on down in Romans 8, it says that we are no longer obligated to the flesh. We have a new attitude, a new way of thinking. You know, there are a lot of people, and there are a lot of Christians who believe this. They believe that you're saved by faith and by grace, but then you live by works. You know what I'm saying? They begin to have a list of things that they want, that they think that a, a, a good Christian should do. And of course, the list changes from maybe church to church or Christian to Christian. But it, essentially what they're saying is, you're saved by grace, but you live by works. And that is not the attitude that the Bible wants us to live. Once again, sons perform from acceptance, right? And this is the attitude of the Son of God, that we are accepted already. But I want you to realize this, um, and one of the things this brings out here is that there are two attitudes, there are two mindsets, there are two ways of operating, and one is operating in the flesh, and one is operating in the Spirit. Now the sons of God operate in the, in the Spirit of God. For, the, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14, that was our verse. So I want you to think about this. What does it mean to operate by the flesh? Well, the flesh we know is our sinful nature. It's the, it, it, essentially, it's working independently of God. It's saying, God, I've got this. God, I can handle this. And I see the outcome in my life that I desire. And I'm going to, respond in a way to determine the outcome that I want. That's what, that's what the flesh actually does. The flesh is, is, a way of, is a way of thinking about this. It's saying I'm in control. It's self-reliance. It's taking yourself and putting yourself in the center of the universe. You know, they say marketers always say that the way to sell something is you always want to answer the question, what's in it for me? Well, you see, the self, the flesh, operates thinking that way with everything that happens. In the circumstances that happens in their life, in the way that they should respond in the outcome, they're always thinking, what's in it for me? That is what it means to operate by the flesh. But operating by the Spirit is something very different. See, so we move into a higher level of thinking. And first of all, what happens when we begin to, to live in the Spirit, we begin to move from having self in the center of the universe to putting God in the center of the universe 
and we revolve around that. You see what I'm saying? God is in the center. Moving from this idea of what's in it for me, the bigger question becomes, how can this or how can I begin to honor God? That's what it means to begin to operate in the Spirit. And, um, you know, it's thinking and saying and doing things with the help of God. It's, it's, it's part of what it means to live in the Spirit. It's an attitude of saying God is in control. I'm going to rely on God. And I'm going to, to walk in the Spirit. You know, think about this. So often, when we walk in the Spirit, we see our circumstances through a different set of lenses. You see, when we walk in the Spirit, we see that even in our obstacles, there are opportunities. There are opportunities to grow and mature. There are opportunities to influence other people. There are opportunities to have a deeper, more meaningful relationship with God in whatever circumstance we have. We also know that as we live in the Spirit, our responses change. No longer is it a self-response in our own strength and our own power. We know that the Spirit gives us energy, gives us enlightenment, that the Spirit equips us to be able to carry out the purposes that we have. The Spirit <clears throat> gives us all these things that we need to carry to fulfill the outcome that God has for our lives. Even think about this. Think about living by the Spirit is also a little different with the outcome. So often we think that we need to have faith in a certain outcome. And in a sense, that's true. But it even expands that faith. You see, our faith is not necessarily in a specific outcome. Our faith is in the one who holds the outcome no matter what that outcome may be. That's what it means to live in the Spirit in a sense. But I want to give